Shalom. Call Layla. Yahow. Bahashim. Yahow Shai. Bahashim. Rekal Kadash. All praises be to the Most High. Yahow. In the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior. Yahow Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, and pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honors and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson entitled, The Spirit of Discernment. So this was a question to a previous video lesson that I did. Mamzer Hunter, judge not, or don't judge a book by its cover. That was the title of it. And this beloved sister is sincere. She says, if they look like the other nations, but cannot trace their lineage back, for them to know how would they know if they can't trace their genealogy, basically. That's what she's asking. <clears throat> so we're going to answer the question. And this is her second response. Because I did answer it, and I'm going to answer it again. So this is how we know. Not going to make this long. The Most High has given the gift of the Holy Spirit to his anointed ones, starting with the apostles, prophets, teachers. Let's get that. What is that gift of the Holy Spirit? The comforter, a nourishing spirit sent from on high. Wisdom of Solomon 9 Verse, let's go to verse 9. And wisdom was with thee, which knoweth thy words, and was present when thou madest the world, and knew what was acceptable in thy sight, and right in thy commandments. Now, if you understand, that spirit of wisdom is Yahweh Shai. He is the breath of the Most High and his image. How do we know that? Well, let's go to uh, verse 7 and 20. What is it at? 6, right here. Wisdom of Solomon 7, verse 26. For she is the brightness of the everlasting light, the unspotted mirror of the power of God and the image of his goodness. So that's why when you read John 14, where Yahweh says to Philip, he that have seen me have seen the father. So the doctrine of Yahweh is the doctrine of, of the Most High, Yahweh. That's what it means. Let's go back. Wisdom of Solomon 9, <clears throat> verse 10. O send her out of thy glory. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> o send her out of thy holy heaven and from the throne of thy glory, that being present, she may labor with me that I may know what is pleasing unto thee. For she knoweth and understandeth all things, and she shall lead me soberly in my doings and preserve me in her power. So the spirit or the gift of the Holy Spirit knoweth all things. That's how we're able to see through the flesh. And many people hate the men of the Lord because we're not judging based on appearance. <clears throat> Where was I going with this? Let's see. Yeah, let's go to John 14 and 26. So the gift of the Holy Spirit 
gives us the proverbial third eye. <coughs> John 14 and 26. These, let's go to verse 25. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So through reincarnation, these same men are back. That's why he said, will call to remembrance all things that I have said unto you. What all things? This full true doctrine. So the men of the Lord, followed by the remnant of the hopeful elect, have the gift of spiritual discernment. <clears throat> now, what is discernment? Discernment. Discernment. The ability to judge well. Did not the Most High say, I will restore thy judges as at the first? <clears throat> Isaiah 1 and 26. And I will restore thy judges as at the first and thy counselors as at the beginning. Afterward thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. <clears throat> so these judges are back. They are teaching right now, apostles, elders, prophets. <clears throat> and I will restore thy judges as at the first and thy counselors as at the beginning. Afterward, thou shall be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. So these judges are being raised up, the men of the tabernacle of David. So we see beyond color. <clears throat> Let's keep going. So how will they know that there are Israelites? There's more. Let's go to Romans 8 or 16. The spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So we know through the gift of the Holy Spirit that teaches us all things. That's why we read that with Solomon 9, verse 11. For she knoweth and understandeth all things, and she shall lead me soberly in my doings, and preserve me in her power. So shall my works be acceptable, and then shall I judge thy people righteously and be worthy to sit in my father's seat. Now this is heavy. So these are the men of the Lord, prophets. Then we can judge through the spirit of the Lord. This is heavy. And I didn't intend on reading that. Wow. For she knoweth and understandeth all things, and she shall lead me soberly in my doings and preserve me in her power. So shall my works be acceptable, and then shall I judge thy people righteously and be worthy to sit in my father's seat. <clears throat> so then we're able to judge. Through the gift of the Holy Spirit. Righteous judgment. Matter of fact, let's go to John 7 and 24. <clears throat> Excuse me. John 7, verse 24. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. So we don't look at what somebody appears to be. We understand through the gift of the Holy Spirit that 
that it's uh it's not based on what you look like. That's why I went here and pulled this up. Anyway, let's keep going. Don't want to make this long. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon 1, verse 3. For forward thoughts separate from God and his power when it is tried reproveth the unwise. So if you are malicious, wicked, or evil, you're not going to understand or be able to receive this full gospel. How do we know that? Well, let's go to, um, where is it at? Sirach 39 and 28. Sirach 39, verse Nope, 24, excuse me. <clears throat> Sirach 39, verse 24. As his ways are plain unto the holy, so are they stumbling blocks unto the wicked. See? So if you're wicked, you're not going to receive the Holy Spirit. The Edomites are categorized as the wicked. Pursuant to Malachi 1, Verse 4. Let's go to verse back to Wisdom of Solomon 1. Verse, verse 4. Wisdom of Solomon 1. Verse 4. For into a malicious soul wisdom shall not enter, nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. So that's how we know. The Bible is a filter. It's a sifter. It's filtering or sifting the elect of Jacob. So well, that's how we know. For into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. Now, this is another key part. Verse five. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit and remove from thoughts that are without understanding and will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. So the Holy Spirit is not dwelling with a malicious, unrighteous soul like these guys. One moment, see? So this is how we're able to discern between the holy and the profane or the unclean, the righteous and the unrighteous, the wicked and the righteous. This is how we know. Through the spirit of truth. Speaking of spirit of truth, <laughs> let's go to um, John 16 and 13. John 16 and 13. Howbeit, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. What things to come? Bible prophecy. So we can foresee or prophesy, which means to say before. Why? Because we have a spiritual eye. Let's keep going. <clears throat> so this book is a spiritual book and gives the men of the Lord the gift of understanding. To judge. See? 1 Corinthians 2, verse 15. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Yet he himself is judge of no man. Judgeth all things. See? Discernment. The ability to judge. So the Holy Spirit is a gift 
of discernment. Why you think King Solomon asked for the gift of understanding to be a wise judge, to judge Israel? <clears throat> Let's get through this. <clears throat> John 6 and 27. But those that have a wicked or malicious soul are going to be offended by the word. And this is Yahweh Shai speaking. John 6 verse 27. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him have God the Father sealed. So this bread, this meat of life, the table that we are feeding from, is the full roll. That's why he told Ezekiel, eat this roll that I give unto you. In Ezekiel chapter 3. Verse 28, then said they unto him, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? Yahawashai answered and said unto them, this is the work of the Most High, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. What is that? That's the bread of life. The word made flesh. We must eat his flesh and drink his blood. That's this doctrine and his way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. So we must also walk in the path of light, a righteous path that Yahweh Shai walked. In fact, let's go to verse 57. Nope. Let's go here. Verse 50. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. What world? Read Isaiah 45 and 17. Israel. So we are eating from the manna that fell from heaven. The bread of life or the word made flesh. This doctrine. And what else it means? By default, we must accept Yahweh Shai came in the flesh. Verse 51 again. <clears throat> I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. But many are offended by the word made flesh. That the son of man came in the flesh as man and this doctrine. How do we know that? Well, let's go to uh, first. Let's read this. John five, uh, six and fifty-five. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. The gift of understanding, the Holy Spirit, dwells within the hopeful elect. Let's get to the key point. See, watch this. Many are offended by the word made flesh. Verse 51, excuse me, John 6, verse 61. When Yahawashai knew in himself that the disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, does this offend you? So they were murmuring. So this Bible is high level understanding. You're going to get offended 
if you don't have the spirit of discernment, the anointed oil. When Yahweh Shai knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, does this offend you? When and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before. Let's get verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. John 6 and 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So this is a heavenly doctrine that leads to eternal life. And many people can't receive it. Why? Because they're stuck in the flesh. They don't have a spiritual eye of discernment. You must have the third eye or the spiritual eyes to see. So that slang that they use in the occult world, third eye. So only Jacob can receive this word that have eyes to see. How do we know that? Let's go to Psalms 147, verse 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Now, if somebody show you something, you got to be able to see it. See that? If they're showing it to you, and you can't see it, then you can't receive it. So what does that mean? You're being spiritually blinded. <clears throat> now this sister, I believe, is amongst the hopeful elect. But many don't have the spiritual eyes to see. So if I'm showing you this word, and you can't see it or receive it, you're not amongst the hopeful elect. Because the spirit of understanding, the comforter, gives us the ability to see and understand this doctrine, this word. Let's read it again. Psalms 147, verse 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. So the elect of Jacob can see spiritually. Let's close out here. How do we know that? Well, let's go to Luke. 10 and 22. All things are delivered to me of my father, and no man knoweth who the son is but the father, and who the father is but the son, and he to whom the son will reveal him. Reveal. Reveal. Let's go into that word reveal. So only the elect of Israel can see that word reveal mean? Comes from the Greek. Strong's G601. Apocalypto. 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 Like revelations. Reveal. The root word reveal. Oh, oh. Whoa. Wow. To take off the cover. To do what? To take off the cover. So the, the veil is being removed to the elect to disclose so we can see be, behind the scene. We can see the works of darkness to disclose, to make bare. What did the Bible say about Esau? I have made Esau bare. He can no longer hide himself. So the light is shining on darkness through the eyes of the elect that have eyes to see and ears to hear. Wow, this is heavy. To disclose, to make bare, to take off the cover. So we have a spiritual level of understanding. Wow, this is heavy. Let's go back to Luke 10. Verse 22, all things are delivered to me of my father, 
and no man knoweth who the Son is but the Father, and who the Father is but the Son, and he to whom the Son will reveal him. And he turned him unto his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see. The elect can see. So this is a high level spiritual IQ. And he turned him unto his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see privately. That's a small remnant. Not the masses. Mass means death. That's why 2 Nebuchadnezzar 9 and 22 says, Let the multitude perish then, which were made in vain. Let's close out here. Luke 10 and 24. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. So really, it's talking about the word made flesh, the physical being, Yahawashai, and the doctrine. But at that, in that context, it's talking about him being on the scene. In the Old Testament, many prophecies are prophesying about the arrival of the Son of Man. So that's what he was talking about. Many have desired to see what you see. But in essence, it's also the doctrine. Why? Because Shai says in Hebrews 10 and 4, Psalms 40 and 7, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. This is how we can see. See that? So we don't see color. We see the spirit. We can see demonic spirits or dark energy on vessels or people. And we can see who the hopeful elect are. That's spiritual discernment. Well, we got to get one more. Malachi 3 and 17. Malachi 3 <coughs> and 16. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. The elect feared the Lord in his name, which includes the doctrine. Verse 17, And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, and that day when I make up my jewels and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall ye return. <clears throat> this is important. The elect are returning to the word of promise, the word of covenant. That's why we read Psalms 147 and 19. <clears throat> he showeth his word unto Jacob. He showed, so only the elect can see and receive it. <clears throat> Malachi 3 and 17. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. To discern. That's why we looked that word up. <clears throat> Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. Let's read it again. <clears throat> then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. So we can see the wicked, Esau, Edom, and those following the wicked, the two-third Israelites, followed by the heathen and Gentile nations, that are wandering after the beast, this system. So hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai.
by Hashem or Kakadash. So this is heavenly wisdom. It is not meant for everybody. It is a treasure still a treasure if everybody has access to it? No. Wisdom is a hidden treasure that dwells within a small remnant of the elect. Kwame Yashirala and Abad Babao. Or I could thumb. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwame Yashirala and Abad Babao. Shalom.